Hey, what's up followers? Dave here from CNC3D. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the absolute best way for you to use any ER type collet. So that could be an ER11, ER20, ER25, or an ER32, or any ER possible collet that you can actually get on the market. And let's take a close look at how these collets actually work, and let's take a look at the collet nuts, and we'll show you the best method for you to actually insert your end mills so that you get optimal results and you minimize the chance of any breakages and get the best possible cuts you can. So let's take a close look here at these actual collets that we have here. So we've got an ER20 collet here. This is a six mil collet, and we have this ER20 collet nut. Now, what most people will typically do is they will basically put their collet into here and they'll insert their end mill in the bottom and then they'll go through and they'll actually tighten it up on here, which essentially forces the collet in. Now, this isn't actually the best way to do it. So let's show you the best way you can. So if we take a look on here, what you'll notice on the inside of this collet nut, and it might be a little bit hard to see, is there's this little lip on the inside underneath here. And the purpose of that is so that this little lip that's on the actual collet can actually click into the collet nice and straight into the actual collet nut. So if we go ahead, we're just gonna push this collet into here without a tool in there, and we're gonna get it to actually click in. So just keep pushing until it clicks. And you probably just heard that click on there. And so that is now inserted into the collet and it won't actually fall out of the collet nut. So now what you would normally do is you would go ahead and get your cutter and just insert it into the actual collet. Now it is important to note as well too, and this is a common thing that we do see, is that when you are actually inserting your end mill in here, we're just using this six mil round shaft so we can actually do some tests on our dial gauge over here in a moment. But basically you wanna make sure that you have the actual end mill as far into the collet as you can possibly get it without it starting to encroach on the edges of the flutes. So basically, you would normally go through and insert this nice and far into this, into this collet here. And then basically what you wanna do is just go ahead and actually tighten it up. So let's go and do that now. Now, it is important to note here as well that when you are actually tightening up your actual collets on the collet nut, that you don't actually need a huge amount of force in order to be able to actually secure the end mill into the collet. If you actually put too much force on there, what you can do is you can actually damage the spring steel collet itself and it'll start to form a little meniscus across the edge. And this will actually increase your chances of run out. Now, the purpose of this experiment with the dial gauge is to actually try to measure the amount of run out that we actually do have on this collet and on the tip of this tool. So run out is basically what happens when your tool is not 100% straight inside the actual collet itself, or if there's something wrong with your spindle. Most spindles are actually very, very good from the factory, so they have a very, very low runout rating. So what we find is runout is where the tip down the bottom here is actually wiggling side to side. It's not actually going perfectly straight up and down. And so what that does is it can cause breakages to occur on your end mills. It can also make your surface finish very, very rough and your edge finish as well. So let's just go and put this dial gauge up against the bottom of this particular uh, six mil round shaft that we have here. And let's take a look at what the runout is on the dial gauge. Okay, now that is pretty much on the zero on our dial gauge. So let's go ahead and see what our actual runout is here. So all I'm gonna do is just rotate this 
and will observe any movements. Now it is important to note as well too, that each one of the numbers that are on this dial gauge here, they represent 0.01 millimeters. So we're actually very, very low on the run out front. Now this isn't absolutely perfect, but it is very, very close. So as we go through and rotate this, it is also possible that our hardened round shaft is not 100% perfect. This isn't a precision round shaft, but you get a pretty fair idea that we're within a very, very tight tolerance of run out on here. Now, if we were to go ahead and do it the way that people conventionally do it, then we'll see what the difference actually is. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and actually removed our collet off here, we're actually gonna go through and show you how you can actually remove this from here. So first thing to do is to remove your tool. We're just gonna place that down here. And now you'll notice that this actually has a pretty good grip inside this collet nut. So basically what you wanna do is grip your collet nut securely and take your thumb and basically push down across the side this way so that we're pushing on the side until you feel it or hear it actually pop out. And that basically is the trick for you to be able to get the actual collet out of your collet nut. Now let's do the way that a lot of people seem to actually use these collets. And what they would normally do is they would normally take their tool, they would insert it into the collet to, to the length that they basically want to have it at. They're gonna just rest it inside this actual collet nut and then go ahead and insert it. So let's do that now. And now let's go ahead and line up our dial gauge and let's see the difference in these results. Okay. So that's looking pretty good at our zero. Now let's just go ahead and see how this actually performs now that we have changed this. So if we take a look, we can see that our run out is almost twice what it was on the original method that we used to actually insert the end mill. Now in this particular instance, it actually isn't as bad as we have seen them before. Sometimes we'll see them actually swing around all the way through to the 80 over here because this particular tool is not perfectly straight. Whereas using the other method by clicking the collet into the collet nut is actually very, very consistent. And you'll find that as long as your end mills are nice and straight, you should always get a very, very good result. So hopefully this should probably help you guys when you're using ER collets of any kind to just make sure that you actually go ahead and snap it into the actual collet nut first and hopefully this should reduce the chances of you breaking any cutters and also greatly improve your cut finishes. I hope this video has been helpful for you today, guys. We hope you have a fantastic week ahead and we'll continue to make some handy tips as we go. Have a great day.